As a proud parent to a rambunctious toddler, you're probably really excited to help them get ready to read. So here are five simple things you can do with your toddler to help them get ready, and not a single one of them is the ABCs. Hi guys, I'm Kathleen Lewis. I'm a homeschool graduate and a homeschool mom to two. I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old, so my toddler is the one that I am doing this round two with, getting her excited about reading. The first thing you can do with your toddler to get them ready to read is read to demonstrate print awareness. What do I mean by that? Well, here's a book. This book is held like this, not like this. And when you open it, you don't hold it like this. You hold it like this, not upside down. When you read, the letters go across the page like this and you read left to right. You turn the pages this direction, not this direction in the English language. Also, these words represent something. It's not just random scribbles on the page. So as you're reading, you're demonstrating to the child all of these elements, which is obviously very important before they ever start attempting to read, um, the fact of this is how the English language works. The second thing you can do with your toddler to get them ready to read is to read rhyming books like the Pow Pow Fish. So in this book, you have fun rhymes like deep in the water where the fish hang out lives the glum gloomy swimmer with an ever present pout. You can also read nursery rhymes. You, there's so many fun rhyming books out there. The rhymes are precursors to phonics and phonics is essentially breaking down the language into um, predictable chunks. So the understanding of how those letters build together is the phonics and rhyming is the precursor to that. If the child can rhyme, they're getting closer to being able to read. The third thing you can do with your toddler to get them ready to read is to read books with full sentences. So what do I mean by that? not the baby books with just one word here and there. So this can be useful, this can be fun with your baby talking about the different animals, but it doesn't build context for them. It, it doesn't demonstrate how sentences are structured and how you can have words that do something and words that are something. So as opposed to this kind of encyclopedia or a book that just has one word on each page. She used to do something like this, like the little blue truck. This is still teaching the animals because there's all sorts of animals in here. There's toads, there's cows, there's sheep, and you're talking about how all of them make different noises. So yes, you can still have those fun animal sound type books, but do it in the context of a sentence and the child can understand faster and also gain more language. And that leads me to number four, read to develop language. Theoretically, in the English language, we have at least 200,000 words. The average person knows anywhere from 20 to 30,000 words in their own vocabulary. But when they speak on a day-to-day -day basis, they you only use anywhere from 600 to 1,000 unique words of that 20,000 plus vocabulary. So if you're only talking to your child, they're not learning as many words as they could be if you read stories. Written stories have a lot more vocabulary than we use in our everyday world, and they have different sentence structures. So use talk to text. Go ahead, stop, pause this, do a talk to text of something. The way you talk is not the same way that they experience the world in books like this. These are a little bit more formal in sentence structures. So if your child is not exposed to this vast array of sentence structures or vocabulary, they'll be lost when they actually start reading. But because not only are they having to jump over the hurdle of actually parsing out words to understand what's on the page, but they have to develop a ton more vocabulary because they've only been listening to 1,000 unique words a day from you. So read, read to develop that vocabulary to demonstrate the different types of sentence structures and um, read a variety of books. Don't just stick with one author. Don't just stick with one favorite book because each unique person has a different flair with how they like to communicate, a different flair with the words they prefer to use, the, the way they like to say something. You'll note there is a common theme here amongst all the four I've said so far and the final fifth one. It is reading. If you talk to any literary expert from a literary association, from education, from researchers, they will all say the same thing. 
the number one predictor of success in reading is not ABCs necessarily, but whether the child has been read to from their earliest years. That is why literary associations are sending books out for free. That is why there is the library drives every summer of let's read more books because the importance of getting your child exposed to the written word is such a primary indicator of later success in reading and reading is a big indicator of later success in education. Not flashcards, not apps, not TV shows, good old fashioned storytelling. Okay, number five, the final thing you can do with your child to get them ready to read is read fun books. Get them excited about reading. Because If they're not excited about picking up a book or listening to a book, then they're never going to want to put in the work to actually learn to read. So what do I mean by a fun book? Well, let me show you what I don't mean. This right here is okay for a baby. It is a one sentence, a baby leopard is called a cub. Okay, well, what does the baby leopard do? Did he play with his mom? Did he fall into a river? This is dry, this is very boring. Same thing with other baby books like this, Touch and Feel Farm. While it may have a, a fun sentence in here in action, which is very important for the littlest, you need to move beyond this to get them excited about reading. That's why you have Miss Spider's Tea Party. That's why you have a little boy making pizza with his dad from scratch using the stuff from the garden. That's why you have Jabari Jumps. The first time this little boy goes to a swimming pool and tries to go off a diving board and yet he's scared to do it. These are stories that can mean things to your child. These are stories that are endearing, that they want to hear the end of the book, that they'll ask you to read again and again. Great, you say, where are all these fun stories? I've got you covered. Right here is a video of a big list of book lists that you can use to find some of these stories. This covers all different age levels so you can continue developing your child's love of reading. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to bump that like button and let me know it.